We hardly get to see sedans being launched in the Indian market because of the obvious domination by crossovers. But whenever a sedan comes around, it's a happy moment not just for the industry as a whole, but also for enthusiasts. And today we have one such car that we are going to be driving. It is the Škoda Slavia that you see behind me. It promises a lot and we are going to be telling everything about it to you. But what exactly is the Slavia? Is it a big performance model at an affordable price point? Or is it a very rounded family sedan that you can genuinely enjoy as well from behind the wheel? Well, it's actually a bit of both. I will come to everything else in a bit, but in terms of design, it's very sharp. It's absolutely on point uh, in terms of the proportions and how it looks on the road as well. There is a little bit of a pronounced overhang at the rear, but apart from that, it's completely fine and it has a massive boot, which again has been a very strong trait by Škoda in its cars. It can gobble up about 510 litres and uh, then if you fold it flat, 1050 odd or whatever crazy number. So yes, in terms of just sheer storage of things or if you want to haul some things, this brings to the segment the kind of boot space that we never saw in the past. And then is the way Škoda has designed the cabin. Again, very straight lines, completely no-nonsense approach. It's all very, very logical. You have some very smart uh, storage spaces as well. And in general, just the look and feel and the fit and finish of the cabin is pretty top-notch. And it feels richer than the Kushak. Kushak is, of course, bringing in the numbers. But the way this thing has been designed and laid out and also the parts that have been used, it is definitely a step above. And the length is very manageable, so that is, again, you know, it gives you the sense that probably the space on the inside is not really going to be all that great because you have such a big boot and you will have uh, the suspension mounts over there. No, but that's not the case. The space is pretty decent. In fact, if you sat in the front, you have all the space that you want. You can genuinely adjust yourself in a very good way. And uh, if you're a fairly tall person, Sitting at the back of another tall person in the front will not be a problem. So in that way, Skoda has uh, definitely sorted out the packaging in a very strong manner. Seats are also pretty okay. They accommodate you pretty well. And uh, they're large and supportive in all the right places. Could be slightly soft perhaps. But then again, you know, it just kind of goes with the nature of the car. and. Uh, the way the suspension has been tuned, it's all very stiff. And on long distances, you're actually going to appreciate this a lot. So I believe, yeah, in a way, it just makes sense. The seating position is bang on. You sat very much in line with the pedals and the pedals themselves have a great amount of feel and uh, they're calibrated in a very nice way. So you don't really have to second guess the inputs that you're making. And uh, it just kind of allows you to flow with the curves that you encounter or just be very comfortable and relaxed if you're just driving in a straight road. Now this is also becoming the norm with a lot of manufacturers that you get display options in the instrument cluster. This one also gets uh, display options. In terms of features, as you would expect from this segment, this brand or in fact now it's just becoming the norm as well. You get everything, all the connectivity options that you can, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, everything else. You also have things that you can track on the app. So all that is pretty sorted. Now the Slavia is good fun to drive and uh, you would expect that because it's so entertaining from behind the wheel, the ride quality is going to be compromised, right? Because there is always a compromise that's done against ride quality and suspension if you want something that is absolutely on rails. But that's not the case entirely over here because yes, the ride is slightly firm, but it's not to the extent that you're going to feel uncomfortable or it's going to make you feel that, uh, you know, it's just not right for city use or highway use as well. It's only suited for some cart sections or track and stuff like that. But no, that's not the case. In fact, if you drive it over any patchy surface or broken roads, it's not that it's not going to be comfortable. In fact, 
you know, it's pretty all right. Especially when it gains pace and goes over some very bad roads, it absorbs them in a more confident way than it does at slow speeds. But uh, it is definitely going to give you a suggestion of the fact that you drove over something quite bad. Now, Skoda does not skimp in terms of uh, safety features and as you would expect, everything is included in this and then some. In addition to everything that is again becoming the norm, you also have a couple of very unique features. Uh, one is the electronic differential lock. Now, the way it operates is that if it senses unloading on the inner wheel, it applies a little bit of a braking compensation force and then just tries to get everything back in order. So it's a very smart and uh, trick solution. Again, as I said, kind of acts like a limited slip differential, but uh, for a car of this sort, it's a phenomenal technology to have. What really, really charms me is the way this thing drives. There is a brilliant level of uh, lateral rigidity that the chassis gives you, and uh, the play on the Steering wheel is also phenomenal. Of course, it's light, but it's not as light as some of the other models have been in the segment in the past, Verna, for example. And it gives you a sense of connection to the road. It may not be all that feelsome, but it is very direct and uh, you get to know exactly what the car is doing underneath you in terms of directional changes. So yes, the rack is very nicely sorted and uh, just overall as well, the platform is phenomenal. We have been hooning about in this Slavia for some time now and uh, it is a very, very charming car. This one makes 150 VHP from 1.5 litres and about 250 Newton meter, which is plenty, come to think of it, because it's only from a 1.5 litre, so the specific output is just amazing for a car of this nature and uh, this segment. Another highlight of the 1.5 litre engine that the Slavia has is the cylinder deactivation technology. Now, what that does is when it senses that you're not really gunning the car down and uh, you can just simply pootle about at very reasonable speeds, it's going to deactivate two cylinders. So technically, you're going to be driving this as a two-cylinder engine. Come to think of it, you have the one litre, which is uh, a three-cylinder engine running all the time. And this one is a 1.5, which in most of the situations at easy throttle input is going to run as a two-cylinder. <laughs> it's just hilarious. But uh, what this does is gives you better fuel efficiency or better control on uh, its fuel gulping habits. Again, a technology that is uh, not really seen anywhere else in the segment. So that's all about the 1.5-litre engine. Now you'll see me driving the other car, which is the 1-litre model, and I'll tell you how that engine behaves. And now, we are driving the 1-litre version, which is, as you would expect, not as fun as the 1.5, because of obvious reasons. Not really all that much power and uh, just feels a little bit more stressed because of the three-cylinder layout as well. But in isolation, this engine is genuinely very good. If I were to not have driven the 1.5, then uh, this would have been completely adequate. I would not have complained about it at all. And the beauty is that you don't feel that it kind of lags when it comes to pulling the car at a respectable pace. And that is genuinely exciting because uh, I reckon that the numbers are going to be driven by the one litre model, not the 1.5. That's going to be very limited in terms of sales. So for people who want performance and also a well-rounded package, this one litre engine is not bad at all. It also comes with dual VVD technology and while you can't really feel it per se when you're driving it, but you can definitely sense that uh, there is this free revving nature that the engine has and uh, that has a lot to do with the double VVD or the dual VVD technology. And in terms of power, uh, 115 odd horsepower and 178 Newton meter kind of spread okay, but the absolute limits are uh, much higher in the rev range. So it likes to be pushed as well. So this engine is going to be a good partner if you're putling around or uh, if you are in the mood 
to really go and attack some corners, it's not going to be disappointing. That's for sure. And this one liter engine is mated to a six speed automatic, which is a regular torque converter. It's not a DSG as a 1.5 has, which is all for the better because you don't really need that expensive technology to go with something which is essentially at the more affordable end of the segment. Of course, it's not as responsive and as quick as the DSG, but it works very well. You will not really have any problem living with it at all. And uh, the one liter also comes with a six speed manual. So if you want to have a little bit more driving involvement, then you can opt for that as well. And there's a need for such cars to keep getting launched in the market every now and then because they remind you what driving really means. Yes, crossovers are becoming great and the monocoque chassis are very nice, but there is a very different sense of involvement with a car like this or a sedan. You sit low, the CG is low, Yes, the ground clearance on the Slavia is actually pretty decent at 139, but you feel more connected to the road and it's just so, so charming.